Hello everyone, so the aim of this section is to show you how you can download whatever kinds of files you use in Scrappy. And for this demo, we will be downloading mp3 files from this website, okay? So at the time recording this video, Scrappy provides to us two pre-built-in media pipelines. One is called the files pipeline, which I'm going to explore in a moment. And the other one is called the images pipeline, which can be used to download images from various websites. They both share the same idea. So right now in this video, we will explore the files pipeline. And for the image pipeline, I'm gonna give it to you as a challenge. So bear with me. All right, now back to the website. And first let's open Chrome Developer Tools so we can inspect the HTML markup. So we have a table which contains the table body. This is where all the contents live. And inside it, we have a list of table rows. The first row represents the headers, name, last modified, size, and description. The second one contains this horizontal line. The third one, which is a link to go back to the parent directory. And lastly, we have the fourth table row, which is the first song, okay? So if we expand it, we can see that we have five table data. One, two, three, four, five. And within the second one, we have a link to the song itself, okay? So the idea is to write an XPath expression that will select this second table data node of all the table rows that are below and including this fourth one. So let's open the search box, Control F, there we go. All right, so let's start first by selecting the second table data from the fourth row, and then I'm gonna show you how to select all the remaining rows that are below it, okay? So double slash dr, two square brackets, four, or you can use the position function like I showed you before. And like this, we selected the fourth row. Okay, so to get the second table data from it, we can do the following. Slash dd, two square brackets, two, and that's it. Now to select all the table rows that are below and including this one, we use the following axis. So just after the double slash, we type following, colon, colon, and that's it. So this XPath expression returned 15 nodes. And like you see, we only have 14 song. This is happening because the last row, which is the image, is selected too. We don't want that to happen, so we need to figure out how we can exclude it. So if we take a look at the last row, we can see that it contains an anchor node with an href attribute set to f.jpg. Whereas the one before this one contains an anchor node with an href attribute that ends with the .mp3 extension. So right after the second table data, we can access the A node and inside the two square brackets, we call the contains function. The first argument is where to search. In our case, it's the href attribute. And the second argument is the value, which is mp3. See, like this, we do only get 14 nodes, which is fantastic. Another way to do this is by excluding all the links that have the JPEG extension. So if we change the value to JPG and we call the not function just before contains, we're gonna get 14 nodes. So I'm gonna stick with this one. All right, now back to VS Code. I already created a project called demo underline downloader and I have one spider called mp3 downloader. So pause the video, initiate a project, and create a spider like this one. Okay, welcome back. So first, let's create an item class. Let's open items.py. And inside the demo downloader item class, let's create two fields. The first one must be called file underline URLs equals to scrapy.field. And the second one is called files, like this. Now, naming the two fields like this is compulsory, okay? It's a must because the files pipeline by default will later grab the URLs from this file underline URLs field, download each one of them, and then store them in the files field, okay? Now back to our spider class, and within the parse method, let's iterate through all the links. So for link in response.xpath, I'm gonna paste the xpath expression, there we go. Now for each link, we will get an anchor node, right? Now the anchor node itself is a relative URL. Let me show you. 
So if we take a look at this one, we can see that the href attribute value contains a relative URL, and of course it's relative to this one. Now, Scrapy can't deal by itself with relative URLs. We need to tell him explicitly to build a full absolute URL. So to build an absolute URL, we can copy this one, right click on this anchor node, edit as HTML, and then we paste the website URL. This is exactly what we need to tell Scrapy to perform, okay? So inside the for loop, let's create a variable called relative underline URL equals to response.xpath dot double slash assign href and then we call dot extract underline first. Next, let's create another one called absolute URL equals to response dot URL join by the relative URL. And like this, we built an absolute URL using Scrapy. Now, the next step is to take this absolute URL and assign it to the file URLs field. So let's import the item loader class and the demo downloader item class. So from scrapy.loader import item loader and from demo underline downloader dot items import demo downloader item. Now within the for loop, let's instantiate the loader. So loader equals to item loader item equals to demo downloader item and selector equals to link. Now just after the absolute URL variable, let's call loader dot add underline value. The field name is file underline URLs and the value is absolute URL. Now just below it, let's yield loader dot load underline item. Now, more importantly, we need to activate the file pipeline. So, in the settings.py file, let's uncomment the item pipelines dict and let's change the default one to scrapy.pipelines.files.files pipeline and we set the priority to one. Next, I want to increase the download timeout, which is by default set to three minutes. So download underline timeout equals to 1200 seconds, which is 20 minutes. You only need to increase it if you have an internet snail speed like mine. Now, finally, we need to set the path where to store the downloaded files. So files underline path equals to and we're going to store it under the project root directory. Now let's save all the files. Click on the file menu and then save all. All right, now let's launch this spider. Scrapy, crawl, downloader, press enter. Hmm, it's not working. Let's see why. So back to VS Code for link in response.xpath loader. So instead of using the link selector object, we use the response. So let's change response to link like this. Control S to save the file. Now back to the command prompt. Let's relaunch the spider. And let's see if it works. Hmm, it didn't work too. So I'm not quite sure this time. So let's go back to VS Code. Everything seems to be correct here. So let's go back to the settings.py file. Scrapy.pipelines.files.files pipeline. Download timeout. Files. Ah, we don't have to use path. We have to use files underline store like this. Now control S to save the file. Let's go back to the command prompt. I'm going to clear everything. And then I'm going to relaunch the spider. Okay, I'm going to let it download two or three songs, then I'm going to stop it. All right, everyone. So once the spider finishes downloading all the files, go back to VS Code, open up the Project Explorer. You will see a new folder called Full, which contains all the MP3 files. In my case, I have only two. 
Now these mp3 files don't have the original file name, right? So what we're gonna do next is override the default files pipeline behavior to store the files by the original name. 